And hello and welcome, my name is Martin, and today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to uh, add the Paragon character, uh, or add the Paragon set as a character and start creating all the things that we need to to be able to see what we did with the demo in the previous tutorial. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're going to need to do is to create a new folder, call it Paragon, so remember that is right clicking in the empty space, and make sure to do this in your A Enemies folder new folder once you've selected it you're going to give it a name i'm calling it paragon uh, since this is going to be our paragon character i've double clicked and opened it so now we're going to right click in the space we're going to go ahead and create three of the four elements that we're going to need and the other the ball the projectile will grab and drag in from another character so let's uh the first one we'll need to do is have a blueprint class uh the blueprint class remember needs to be a character I am not going to name this as of yet uh, because I don't know which one of the characters I'm going to be bringing in and so I'll name it here in just a moment. The next thing that I'm going to need is going to be, so I'm going to right click again in the area, I'm going to go to animation and I'm going to need to create a blend space 1D. Uh, we are going to, well before we do this we need to figure out what skeleton we're working with so let's go ahead and do this first. So let's go into our new blueprint and let's go to mesh and let's go to uh, underneath the details panel into skeletal mesh let's click in and see what we have available okay so i'm going to go ahead and use the murdoch let's use i uh, like the one with the red like the way it looks so let's click on that now if this is your first time bringing it in your compilers are going to come into play and it's going to lock you out of being able to do anything so just be patient uh, pause the video wait for your compilers to finish and then uh, and then proceed so uh, after your compilers are finished the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and reposition and uh, put this character in the right place so let's go ahead and drag them down we want to be or make sure that the feet are close to the tip of the capsule um, so then that way when the character is put on the ground the capsule will readjust it to whatever it, it looks like uh, whatever feels like the floor okay the other thing we also need to do is rotate the character to the front remember that this arrow over here on the side the one that's called arrow component inherit is telling you what direction is front so let's go back to the mesh let's uh, hit the rotate and let's rotate this 90 degrees so this character is now facing forward okay with those two things done uh, we should we now know the name of the character which is Murduk Magma and I can go now in and rename this so let me hit compile and save to save the things that I've done so far and uh, in our blueprint let's go ahead and call this uh, Murdoch underscore BP for blueprint Okay, so the next thing that we're going to need to create is going to be a blend space. Uh, so we're going to go to animation, blend space 1D, and we're going to select that. And now that we know which mesh we're working with, we can type in Murdoch or part of the name. And let's go ahead and call this jog, or I'm sorry, idle, idle to jog. Uh, Paragon is calling the runs jogs, so uh, we're going to name it the same thing so as to not confuse ourselves. So now we have a blend space 1D with the name idle to jog underscore Murdoch. The next thing that we need to create is going to be again in animation. So let's go to animation. Uh, let's go to animation blueprint this time. Uh, we do need to know the skeleton that we're working with, so let's type in Murdoch as the skeleton, click Murdoch, and click OK. Now with this one, we're going to call it Murdoch underscore animation. You don't have to spell the whole word, word out. I like to leave it like this, and then BP or Blueprint. So now we have the Murdoch Blueprint, the, blur, uh, the Murdoch Animation Blueprint, and the idle to jog Murdoch uh, blend space 1D. So those are all have been created. We'll get to these two in the next tutorials. I just wanted them to be made so then that way as we start to reference to them, you'll know that they are things that we can create and add and make ourselves. Uh, from here, the next thing that we need to do is go grab a projectile. So in one of the two enemies that we created earlier that has the ability to be able to shoot, let's grab the projectile and let's click and drag it into our new Paragon folder. And remember that we don't want to move it, we want to copy it. 
Once it's been copied into that folder, what we need to do is right click on it and give it a unique name. So we're going to call this Murdoch projectile. So then that way, uh, when we assign it to this person, it will be doing what uh, it will be projecting this projectile. Now from here, let's go ahead and hit save all down here. So then that way it will actually get rid of these asterisks and everything is saved the way that we have created it so far. All right, so now that that is done, let's go back into Murdoch BP. And what we need to do here, okay, so if this happens, come up here to the top where it says open full blueprint editor. It's because we don't have anything in the editor at the moment, which is why we didn't get anything there. So let's delete those for now. And we need to start building the code, but we don't want to build a whole lot of code because we actually have quite a fit a bit of code. We have running, we have roaming, we have uh, transitioning from running, uh, from walking or from roaming to chasing. Uh, we have the ability to be able to shoot. So there's a lot of things that we can copy from the code that we have before now the only thing is that we have to be careful in copying and making sure that when we do the copy that it makes sense for the character that we're going into and that anything that was a component or variable are recreated and added so with that said uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to rot uh, we're going to go to roam chase shoot and we're actually going to combine that with the rotation and I'll show you how we're going to do this. So let's go into this character first. Let's go into our roam chase shoot. And if you don't have this character, watch the video before, uh, watch the last video series and we'll show you how to uh, create this character right here. Now, the only part of this that I don't want is going to be the actual shooting. So I want the roam events. I want uh, all of these guys right here. So the roam start, the roam event, the chase event, and the event tick to roam chase. So we're going to grab that and make sure that you grab all of everything that is part of this. So I'm going to hit control C to copy. I'm going to go back into the Murdoch BP. So again, so we know where we are, the enemy, Paragon, there's the Murdoch BP. We're going to double click. This is the event graph. We're going to click into it and hit control V. Now, when we do this, obviously there's going to be errors. There's going to be things that came in that were incorrect. So let's go ahead and go through these and clean them up. So the first thing will be the, uh, the events, all the custom events need to be changed. So the first custom event is going to be this one. Uh, we'll delete the one that's there. We'll right click again and type in custom events. So we'll add a new one and we will call this uh, Murdoch underscore roam. So now we have Murdoch's ability to be able to roam. Uh, from there, this part is fine, this part is fine, the AR part is fine, but the roam is obviously incorrect. So we will uh, grab another copy of this, drop it there, and connect it to the delay. And with that being said, since there is the roam here, there is another roam here. Uh, and let's connect that to Murdoch Roam. Okay, so what that does is saying when the game starts, go into Murdoch Roam. Murdoch Roam is this event, which is the AI moving randomly around on uh, the navigation that has been provided. Uh, from there, we put a delay of two seconds in before it does the roam again. Uh, from there, the next one will be the chase. So let's select chase and delete that one. We are going to right click and create a new custom event. So let's type in custom, add custom event. Let's name this Murdoch underscore roam. I'm sorry, chase. Okay, we'll connect that to the AI move. The AI move part is fine. This is obviously incorrect. And actually what I'd like to do with this is actually let's delete all of this. And um, what we're going to do is have this go from Murdoch Chase into a delay. So we'll type in delay. In the delay, we will type in, let's say, 10 seconds. And then from 10 seconds, we are going to send it back to the Rome. So we will grab Rome. Stick it there and add it to the delay. So what this change does is that the Murdoch character will chase us for up to 10 seconds. And then after 10 seconds, it'll go back into Rome. If it senses us again, it'll go back into chase. 
this way the character doesn't infinitely chase you and if for whatever reason you run into let's say a null mesh navigator area where the character can't actually follow you follow you they don't just get stuck waiting for you to leave that area um they will go back into roaming so we'll do that now down here with the event tick, everything is fine except for the fact that we do not have pawn sensing. And actually, let me put that back and let me show you what happens when I hit compile. Yay, there it is, right? It's because we don't have pawn sensing with this character yet. So let's go ahead and fix that by deleting that pawn sensing. That chase is obviously incorrect. We can go ahead and put the Murdoch chase there. And this is also a custom event, which it should be unique to this character. So let's go ahead and delete that. And we'll click out from here and we'll type in custom, add custom event. And remember that we want to do this by dragging out. Uh, if we don't drag out, we're not going to get this extra pin for uh, to being able to connect that to the first person character uh, as part of the rest of the code. So the only thing we need to do now is uh, create the pawn sensing and add it to this target. So let's go to add component. Let's type in add pawn sensing or just pawn sensing. So I guess pawn sensing. Now that we have that there, uh, we can go ahead and click and drag this out and add it to the target. We should be able to hit compile now. We get happy code. The only thing now that we need to do is go grab the rotation part of this. So let's go uh, not into the Rome Chase shoot character. Let's go lose that one. But let's go now to our rotation. So let's go back to enemy. Let's go back to rotate shoot enemy. Let's go into their event graph. And here we're just going to copy all of this. Hit control C. We'll go back into the Murdoch VP. So remember that is an A enemy Paragon Murdoch VP. And we will right click, I will click into the graph and we'll hit paste. I'll move this down a little bit so then that way it's in line with the rest of the code. So on pawn sensing should be correct because we do have pawn sensing. So when it sees the character, it'll do something. It's going to cast it to the first person character. It's going to create a sequence, which is going to find the character's location and allow it to be able to make a rotation. Once this is done, it'll go into the branch. And if we hit compile, we will actually see the pieces of code that don't work. And most of that is going to be in the shooting part because things are named differently in this one. So let's go to the first one, which is going to be pawn uh, spawn pro project location. So that was a variable, if you'll remember. So if we click into variables, uh, we don't have that. So let's go ahead and create uh, two variables. The first variable is going to stay a boolean, so it needs to stay that red color, but we're going to call this spawn. So uh, spawn projectile underscore, I could call it location underscore, and I'll just, uh, Murdoch, we'll just put the full name there. That's fine. Okay. And so this is one that needs to be replaced with that. Okay, the other variable is going to be this shoot amount. So let's click here and rename this one. This one doesn't need a new uh, unique name. So let's just go ahead and call this shoot amount. Uh, we do need to switch this over to a Boolean. So if you click there on the icon, you can actually go straight to uh, from Boolean to float. They'll give you the option to do that. Uh, let's actually just do it from here. Let's delete that now, replace that with the new one. Okay, the other thing we need to do is change the projectile location. Again, we do not have that as a component, so let's go to add. Remember that this is a scene component, so we're going to type in scene. There is utilities, and we are going to call this something similar to what we had before, uh, spawn projectile location underscore and if you don't give this a unique name it's going to see the one down there and it won't let you have the same name so I'm going to put a number one behind this one we're going to click on that delete it grab the scene controller 
add it in. Now here we were using a static mesh, remember? So we had the cube. With this one, it's going to be the mesh itself. So we're going to grab the mesh. We're going to add that to the target of the impulse. And we are going to then add that one down there. And then the last thing that we need to change is going to be uh, the two uh, set variables that are back here on the back. So let's delete the first one, delete the second one. We're going to drag in the variable. We're going to set it, add it to the pins the way the code was before. Remember that the duration is the duration between bullets. And let's add another one of these, set, add it the way it was before. And remember to leave that clicked. Now, before we leave, we do need to hit compile. And we need to make sure that the shoot amount and the spawn variable are labeled correctly. So with the spawn variable, this one, we do need that to be checked as yes. So then that way it will give us a true and will allow this condition, the rest of this, to, to take place. The next thing will be the shoot amount. We need to have the amount that we are able to shoot. I usually put somewhere between 10 and 100 as the variable there. And remember that the delay value here is giving you how, uh, how much uh, time there is between each one of the shots. So with all of these things now done, we should be able to hit compile and save. And uh, if we play the character now, um, we should have all the AI programmed at this point. It's going to shoot at us. It's going to rotate. It's going to chase us. It's going to get tired of chasing us and stop and then go back into roam. The only thing it's not going to do right now is um, that we saw with our demo character is look like it's running, right? So we're going to do that in the next tutorial. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll create the, um, the idle to jog and, and we'll animate the, the, the animation blueprint to be able to get that to good. So now my saving is done. Let's go ahead and add a character here. Let's get them. And actually, you know what? The only thing we didn't really do is we didn't adjust any of the pawn sensing. So let's go ahead and double click in there and let's go into our viewport. And there's actually two things that we need to do. So the first thing is, is to adjust our pawn sensing. So I'm going to go to pawn sensing. Again, we're not doing anything with hearing. So I'm going to hit those down to zero. So then that way I can see just the green. Uh, which is site. Uh, let's knock the site down to something reasonable like 1000. And let's put this for the most part directly in front of the character. So I'm going to go about 50. I might even narrow that down. No, that's actually pretty good. Okay. So that's the first part, which is adjusting the pawn sensing and making sure that the character sees where you want it to see. And then the next thing is going to be creating where the projectile is going to come from. So right now it was coming from the center of the character, from like the pelvic area. And we actually don't want it to come from there. We want it to look like it's actually being generated by the gun. And at this point, we don't have a, he, he's going to look very stiff when he's running around like this. So we're going to do something real quick. We're obviously going to change it later in the next video, but just so that this doesn't look like he's like, just kind of like, uh, you know, like a GI Joe stiff toy that just kind of like floating across. So under, so we're going to click on mesh. We're going to go under here underneath animation mode and you'll see that it says use animation blueprint. Let's click there, and uh, Murdoch should have been loaded in. So let's type in not the anime BP, which is the one we are making. Let's click the one that they gave us. So that would be the Murdoch animation blueprint with the word blueprint spread all the way out. And uh, what's nice about this is that it then gives us at least a, a character that looks like... Um, where is the spawn location? There it is. Okay, so now when we uh, when this thing is following us, at least it'll look like it's sliding in a position with the gun facing forward, uh, instead of uh, instead of what it looked like before, where it just kind of looked like a like some kind of like a, like a mannequin. Here, at least, it's going to have some type of realism. Also, when you are adjusting this point. Uh, do look at it from all sides. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky, 
to get it uh, exactly where you want. The other thing you could also do is grab this and attach it to the mesh, so then that way it's actually part of the mesh. It's uh, it's part of that. And then the other thing that you could also do is uh, if you click on it, hit the rotation, and remember that that uh, the the green is where it's facing forward. So if I hit compile and let's go back to movement, that red. So that right now the gun is going to look like it's going to it's kind of shooting off to the side. So let's navigate that back a couple of degrees. Go back to this. Yeah. Let's go maybe one set of five. Okay. So that's close enough. I mean, I'm not. You know, you could get really nitpicky. You could probably turn uh, rotation grid off, and then. Oh, not that one. Let's do this one. And then you can, in degrees, rotate it. That looks better. Okay, so now it's going to feel like those those that, that ammunition or the nerf balls are coming out from the front of the gun. So let's hit compile and save. And remember, this is still going to look slidey. It's going to look like he's sliding at us. But, okay, so he's sliding. Okay, so his speed is a little bit too fast. Let's slow him down just a little bit. Let's go back to the Murdoch character. Let's go to character movement. And underneath uh, max walk speed, let's drop that down to 300. Our character uh, thinks max speed is around 375. So if we leave this at 300, we'll be able to outrun the character. So let's hit save. Okay, so before we leave here, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go back to the event graph. And underneath the chase event, right now we have it as Murdoch chases to the AI, and then on success it continues to keep chasing. The only thing I want to do with this is I want to put a fail condition on this. So let's go to the event graph, and let's go to um, Murdoch roam, and let's put that down at the bottom. Okay. So now what's going to happen is if uh, this thing ends up not getting there, it'll by default go back to roam. Um, but most of the time it'll be going into the chase um, because the event, um, where did it go in this one there, as long as we keep triggering this, it keeps going back and pushing chase. Now, if this gets through and he happens to succeed and catch us, well, he's going to keep chasing us. But if he doesn't catch us, eventually, if we're no longer in range, he will stop coming after us and he'll go back to being Rome. He'll go back to roaming. So let's go ahead and hit compile and save. And let's check to see if this is what actually happens. So um, I think I have the wrong character out there on the floor. So let's get rid of this guy. Let's get rid of this guy. Let's put one of these on the floor. Let's see how big out. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see how far his pawn sensing is. I'm going to drop this to 1,500. And, oh, the other thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to put the acceptance radiance at, let's say, 1. So he has to get pretty close to us to, uh, to make him continue to keep chasing us. And I'm going to say that uh, it's going to stop or the AI will stop when it overlaps with us. So uh, let's hit that. Let's hit save. And let's see now if that works, or at least works the way we want it to work. Okay, so remember that the character is still doing the floating state deal. So let's see if we can grab its attention. Okay, definitely sees us. Okay, so... So if it gets to us and accepts, it's still chasing us. It's still being told to chase us. If we are inside of the pawn sensing, it continues to keep chasing us. The second we go fast enough away and far enough away to where we are no longer in the pawn sensing range, it should go back to roaming. There we go. So we have now gotten far enough away from the character that we are no longer in its pawn sensing. And because of that, it has now gone back into its roaming state. Um, 
Okay, fantastic. So we've got everything working in this video that we need to. We've got all the AI set up. We've got the rotation and we've got the moving towards and we've got it shooting at us. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add the, um, the, um, the blend space and uh, add that to an animation, uh, to the Murdoch animation blueprint, and that'll then make it look like he's actually walking. Okay, so that'll be the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.